Are you tired of investment opportunities that promise the moon but leave you lost in space? Imagine a world where your investments are as secure as Fort Knox. It's not just a dream. It's Warren Buffett's reality, and it can be yours, too. Welcome to Fun Financial Insights, where we dive into the world of money with a smile on our faces and dollars in our pockets. Today, we're taking a page out of the book of one of the greatest investors of all time, Warren Buffett. If you've ever wondered how he keeps his money growing year after year while avoiding traps most of us fall into, at the end of this episode, you will wonder no more. So buckle up as we decode the Oracle of Omaha's wisdom into practical tips for your investment journey. First, let's take a moment to celebrate the wins. Investing isn't just about avoiding losses. It's also about thrill of the victory. And last year, 2023, has been a testament to that. Despite predictions of a recession and bearish markets, investors who played their cards right saw some impressive gains. The biggest stock story of the year, artificial intelligence. Thanks to breakthroughs like ChatGPT, AI became a hot investment theme, capturing the market's imagination and wallets. But it's not just about this year. History is peppered with investment wins that have turned the bold and the knowledgeable into legends. Take the past five years, for example. Companies like Celsius Holdings and Enphase Energy have delivered returns that are nothing short of astronomical, proving that with the right strategy, you can indeed win big. And let's not forget the titans of the past decade, Netflix, a company that transformed from mailing DVDs to dominating the streaming world, saw its stock skyrocket over 3,700%. It's a clear demonstration that understanding market trends and investing in innovation pays off. So what do these success stories tell us? They remind us that investing is part art, part science, and all discipline. But at the same time, there are winners, there are people who lose money too. How do you avoid being one of those? Now let's take a short walk on the wild side of investments gone awry. Warren Buffett himself has had his share of missteps. One notable error was buying Berkshire Hathaway when it was a failing textile company. Buffett's emotional decision to buy more of the company out of spite ended up costing him dearly in the long run as he kept the struggling business running for another 20 years. Buffett repeated a similar mistake by purchasing Wombeck Mills, another New England textile company, which had to be shuttered not long after its acquisition by Berkshire in 1975. Berkshire Hathaway owned a significant number of shares in the UK-based grocer Tesco. The investment turned sour when Tesco overstated its profits, leading to a tumble in share prices. Now, these stories serve as a reminder that even the most successful investors can make mistakes. The key takeaway is to learn from these errors, avoid emotional decision making, and conduct thorough research before investing. Imagine you're at a yard sale and you spot a vintage comic book for a dollar. You know it's worth way more, so you snag it. That's value investing. And it's how Buffett rolls. He picks stocks like picking ripe apples. Only the juiciest, most undervalued ones make it into his basket. Value investing is a strategy focused on finding undervalued stocks with strong fundamentals and holding on to them for a long term. He looks for companies with solid earnings, growth potential, and competent management. But what truly sets him apart is his unwavering commitment to his principles, regardless of market fluctuations. He is able to apply his knowledge of the fundamentals instead of being driven by FOMO. Financial literacy isn't just about counting your change. It's about making your money work for you. It's the armor you wear into the battlefield of investments. Buffett didn't just wake up one day and start throwing cash around. He read, he learned, and he asked questions like that time he bought a pinball machine and turned it into a money-making empire as a kid. True story. There are two major rules that guide Buffett's investing. Rule number one, never lose money. And rule number two, never forget rule number one. Sounds straightforward, right? but there's depth to it. It's not about never making a loss. Even Buffett has faced setbacks. It's about the mindset of minimizing risk 
and avoiding unnecessary losses. It's about being cautious and not gambling away your future on a hunch. Next, we will look at the psychological traps you can avoid and some habits you need to build so the market fluctuations will not sway you. So keep watching and at the end of this video, I will share with you three of the biggest loss making investments for consumers in history. But first, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please take a moment and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Now let's talk traps, psychological traps to be precise. These are the sneaky little biases that trip up even the most seasoned investors. And guess what? You're probably not immune. But don't worry, we've got the Buffett antidote. Imagine that the market is booming. Stocks are soaring. Everyone around you is buying up shares like they're the last slices of pizza at a party. You feel the FOMO creeping in. That's fear of missing out, folks. And it's a powerful force. But here's where Buffett's wisdom shines like a lighthouse in a stormy sea of greed. He says, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Simple yet profound. So what does that mean for you, the investor? It means when the market's hot and everyone's buying, you need to hit the brakes. Take a step back. Analyze. Are these investments really worth their prices or is it just hype? Conversely, when the market's down and everyone's selling in a panic, that's your cue. Look for quality stocks that have been unfairly beaten down. That's your discount aisle and it's time to go shopping. But why is it so hard to go against the herd? Well, it's all about wiring. We're social creatures. We feel safe in numbers. It's a survival instinct, but the stock market is not the savanna. And you're not a gazelle. You're an investor and investors need to think differently. To invest like Buffett, you need to cultivate two things, patience and independence. Patience to wait for the right opportunity and independence to move when others won't. It's not easy, but it's essential. Let's break it down with some real life data. Did you know that during the 2008 financial crisis, when most investors were running for the hills, Buffett was buying? He invested billions in companies like Goldman Sachs and General Electric, companies he knew were solid. And guess what? Those investments paid off big time. That's the power of being greedy when others are fearful. It's not about being reckless. It's about being confident in your analysis and understanding of the value. Investing can be a thrilling journey, but it's also riddled with traps set by cunning con artists. They promise you the stars, but all you get is a black hole in your wallet. The Oracle of Omaha has seen it all. The way he avoids empty investments like this is by looking beyond the surface. He likes to say, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So let's dive into the murky waters of scams and schemes and learn how to swim safely. What are some of the tips to avoid being the catch of the day? Tip number one, do your homework. Buffett is a firm believer in understanding what you invest in. Don't just take someone's word for it. Research the company, its financials, and its track record. Be skeptical. If someone promises you guaranteed returns or pressures you to act fast, your scam radar should be blaring. Real investments need careful consideration, not a rush to the finish line. Tip number three, check the source. Legitimate investments come from legitimate sources. If you can't find solid information about the investment or the person offering it, it's time to walk away. While you check your investments to see if they are scams or not, here are three simple things you can use to spot the scams. Let's break it down. Promises of high returns with no risk. Buffett says there's no such thing as a free lunch. High returns come from high risk. If they say otherwise, it's a red flag. Secrecy and complexity. Buffett loves simplicity. If you can't understand how the investment works or if it's shrouded in secrecy, that's a no-go zone. Pressure to invest quickly. Buffett takes his time. Scammers want you to hurry so you don't 
think. Always take a step back and think it through. You see, Buffett didn't build his empire by chasing after quick cash. He did it by making smart, well thought out investments, and that's exactly what you should aim for. Now, as I promised, here are three of the biggest loss making investments for consumers in history. First up, we've got the infamous tale of the pet rock craze. Back in the groovy 70s, someone had the brilliant idea to sell rocks as pets. Yes, you heard that right, rocks. And people actually bought them. It became a cultural phenomenon with folks shelling out their hard-earned cash for a glorified paperweight. But alas, like all fads, the pet rock trend eventually fizzled out faster than you could say rock on. Believe it or not, the inventor, Gary Dahl, sold over 1.5 million pet rocks, making him a millionaire overnight. However, for the investors who tried to ride the pet rock wave, it was a different story. With an initial investment of around $3.95 per rock, many found themselves holding on to worthless rocks as a craze died down. Next on our list of financial flops is the dot-com bubble of the late 90s. Ah, the era of dial-up internet and funky websites with flashing GIFs. It was a time when investors were throwing money at any company with a dot-com in its name, faster than you could say, you've got mail. During its peak, the NASDAQ Composite Index, which was heavily weighted with tech stocks, reached a staggering 5,000 points. However, when the bubble burst in March 2000, the index plummeted by a whopping 78% over the following two years erasing trillions of dollars in market value. Companies like Pets.com, which famously spent millions on advertising but never turned a profit, went from being the darlings of Wall Street to cautionary tales in record time. Last but not least, we have the legendary tale of the Beanie Baby Bubble. Remember those adorable stuffed animals with the heart-shaped tags? They were all the rage in the 90s, with collectors going to extreme lengths to get their hands on rare beanies. At the peak of Beanie Baby Mania, there were some rare collectibles were fetching prices in the thousands of dollars. In 1998 alone, Ty Incorporated, the company behind Beanie Babies, reported sales of over $1.4 billion. But as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. By the early 2000s, the bubble had burst and the secondary market for Beanie Babies collapsed. Many investors who had sunk their savings into these plush toys found themselves holding on to worthless inventory as demand vanished overnight. So there you have it, Savvy Savers. Stories of wins, real-life losses, and now you're armed with Buffett's wisdom. You're ready to navigate the treacherous waters of the investment world. Keep your eyes open your mind sharp, and your wallet safe. That's a wrap for today's episode of Fun Financial Insights. If you enjoyed our scam-busting adventure, leave a comment and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, invest wisely. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.